Some time ago, we had a closer look at the Scythe Mugen Rev C, a solid cooler, very good noise to performance ratio, excellent compatibility, just overall a very pleasant and great experience. Now let's go bigger, meet the Fuma 2 Rev B, not to be mistaken with Rev A. Yes, there has been the exact same update going from a Fuma 2A to a Fuma 2B as there was on the Mugen 5 Rev B to a Mugen 5 Rev C. New fan, faster fan, black fan. So again, this review is specifically made for the Fuma 2 Rev B. If your fan is not black, the numbers will just not apply to you. Now let's finally get to the cooler. The Fuma 2 Rev B comes in the usual and beloved scythe packaging, a bit of imagery, some features, a healthy amount of old school Japanese samurai stuff, just enough to push me a bit closer to the edge of actually buying a katana. Every scythe unboxing makes the urge a bit harder to withstand. I don't know why. There's two more cooler or fans and I, and I swear I'm unboxing that thing with a giant sword. Inside we will find pretty much the same content as we did inside a Mugen box. Installation hardware for AMD and Intel, a tube of thermal paste, an extra screwdriver, a 2 to 1 PVM splitter and three sets of fan clips. Two for the included fans and the other one in case you want to tune that thing with a third fan. Compatibility wise the Fuma 2B got a upgrade as well. AM5, AM4, AM3 and so on for Team Red. On the blue side it's LGA 1700, 1200, every 1150 as well as 2066 and 2011. To get the cooler on top of your Intel CPU we need to take the provided backplate and position the screws on the side according to your socket the most outer position for LGA 1700 and the inner ones for everything else. After positioning the backplate behind your motherboard, we can install the spacer with the rubber side facing down on top of the outsticking screws, followed by the mounting brackets with a little indentation pointing inwards. Just make sure to use the right ones, cause there is a special LGA 1700 version included in the box. From there, just mount the whole thing down using the nuts. Over on AMD side, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets put the previously mentioned spacers with the rubber on the bottom side on there instead, followed by the retention brackets in an outwards pointing position and screw the everything down. From there on both platforms, slap some of that thermal paste on top of your CPU, then the heatsink and screw the conveniently permanently attached mounting bridge, good job scythe, down using the space in the center. And yes, you can install the cooler with all of the fans already pre-installed on it, however, do yourself a favor and remove at least the central fan, it, it makes stuff a lot easier. With the installation and compatibility part covered, let's get to the stuff that actually matters, starting off with the heatsink. The enormous chunk of aluminum you will get called a Fuma 2 is a dual tower style heatsink. In the bottom we have a relatively big copper nickel plated base with six heat pipes traveling up that big ass heatsink and ending up at the top with the last fin being painted in a slightly matte black finish and a stamped out scythe logo. But there is a little bit more to those fins. Something that I haven't seen until now is the asymmetry of the fins. Instead of just being kind of a square and maybe a bit of an indentation, the Fuma 2 has a type of scissor style fin design. It's, it's kind of hard to see but there is a pattern of one fin protruding on one side and the other one below on the other side. It's like a scissor. I have no idea if that has any like significant impact on performance, but it looks hella interesting. Also kind of interesting to note, although the heatsink of a Fuma 2 looks like it is more spaced out compared to a Mugen 5, it is actually not. The scissor design just makes it look like it is. To be exact, we are looking at 49 fins versus 41 at the exact same total height of 154.5 mm. Ignoring that 20 second brain hemorrhage, the Fuma 2 comes in a dual fan setup. The fan that is supposed to be installed in the front is a 15 mm thick case flex 2 slim spinning at up to 1500 rpm whilst pushing 39.4 CFM at 
0.96 millimeters of H2O. The one in the center is the same case Flex 2 we already saw on the Mugen, spinning at also 1500 rpm and pushing 67 CFM at 1.5 millimeters of H2O. Both fans are controllable over a 4-pin PVM signal and they can be hooked up to the same header using the included splitter. Also important to note is that one of the included fan brackets has a little 120mm slim fan clip sticker on it. As long as your family tree isn't shaped like a circle, this is kind of self-explanatory. Compatibility-wise, I must say I am extremely impressed with this thing, or more with Scythe in general. The Mugen was already compatible with pretty much everything, although it is relatively big. But the Fuma 2 is a dual tower, dual fan monster. And at that same time, it is still 154.5 mm high. So it will fit into the cheapest shoe carton, and the front fan still does not protrude over the first RAM slots. So again, 100% RAM compatible. And the offset on the back heatsink allows motherboards with 8 RAM slots to use up to 55mm high RAMs, so to speak, on both sides. Or for normal people, this will be far above, like for example, the stuff that manufacturers put on top of their I.O. So as far as compatibility goes, I am not aware of anything that will not be capable to be used with this, except for like ultra small form factor cases, of course, but that's like not the normal case. So for normal hardware, this is as good as it gets. Just compare it to a Noxia NHD15. That thing is 165 mm high by default, and that only accounts for sub 32 mm high RAM. But the top RAM inside my own working rig are 48 mm high, so that fan is being pushed up by 16 mm. Congratulations, my Noxia NHD15, which no joke, is now installed in my editing rig, is now a full 181mm high. And compared with the 154 of the Fuma, which will always be 154, no matter what RAM we will use, that's very good. But before we draw any negative or positive conclusion, let's get to the benchmark. We tested the Fuma 2B on top of our usual 3900X benchmark setup. While running at max speed, this one managed to keep the CPU at a solid 53 degrees C above ambient. This places it in the same category as an Arctic Freezer 34 eSports or a Be Quiet Dark Rogue Pro 4. Pretty solid so far. Compared to other dual tower coolers, we have for example a Silverstone Hydrogon, just a degree in front, or the Noxia NHD15 at 5 degrees lower. On the noise to performance side, we were able to see Scythe's strongest aspect. Again, the noise to performance ratio at lowest RPM numbers. While the Fuma 2 was able to outperform things like the Silverstone Hydrogon from the get-go, it was just slightly ahead of its single-fanned Mugen brother. However, while lowering the fan speed, it lost a bit of track, but pushed that number low enough and it managed to catch up to the Mugen and stay at the same position until the very end. But the most important comparison for us was, was just Mugen versus Fuma. On this almost empty graph, we can see that although the Fuma can push the temps down slightly more at the expense of a bit of noise, which makes sense, it's two versus one fan. As soon as you even touch the slider, the noise to performance ratio falls behind the Mugen, giving it the advantage for like 90% of the graph. So where does this leave us? Compared to things like the Hydrogun, the Fuma 2 is definitely the better option. It's in basically every category. Against other higher performance dual tower coolers like a D15, it is not even near its performance level, but the Fuma 2 can score major points with its 154mm height, which will stay 154 no matter what you do. So as a standalone cooler, this thing is very solid. It may not be the best, but noise to performance is very good. And I believe this is the best dual tower cooler I have seen so far as far as compatibility is concerned. But, and that's a big but, the Mugen 5 Ref C exists. Although the Fuma 2 is a dual tower, dual fan cooler, the Mugen is the noise to performance winner from 90% fan speed down to 25%, and it has the exact same compatibility. So although I like the design, I like the black cover, I, I think it looks pretty neat, and I generally prefer the optic of a dual tower cooler, I cannot say go for the Fuma, because the Mugen is better. Sure, if you are willing to sacrifice a tiny edge of performance to noise for that look, sure go for it, there is nothing wrong going for this with for example a 5900X or 12700K and below. But you're, if you're looking for a better cooler and a better bang for the buck frankly, 
the Mugen 5 Ref C is, is just the better way to go. But okay, this should be it for the Scythe Fuma 2 Ref B. At this point, a huge thank you to Scythe for sending over the Fuma 2, and if you haven't watched the review on the Mugen 5, you can go check it out now. On a side note, we now also have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to say your solo phone RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to give the lawyers even more money because I'm still not out of my contract for the for the tuned Honda. I, I really believed I was buying a Mugen. Yeah. I'm getting a Honda. Maybe those lawyers want to buy a Katana and solve the issue differently? I, I don't know. M maybe it's how these things work. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Anyway, thank you for watching and talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.